Have you noticed that during election season, both Republicans and Democrats run on this notion that they're going to cut taxes on the middle and lower class and tax the rich, tax big corporations. Also in the meantime, they're going to extend healthcare coverage, lower the cost of education, or maybe even make it free. And they announce one free social program after the other to ensure you a better quality of life. Politicians are smart, they're charismatic. They know how to catch our attention. I mean, how can any of us turn down free healthcare, education, and social programs that will vastly improve our lives? But then, election cycle after election cycle, we're left with politicians that always seem to overpromise and underdeliver. They promise that if we just tax the rich and increase funding to certain programs, they will miraculously improve our quality of life. Where did this myth come from that if you tax the rich, it will benefit the poor? And are we even taxing the rich? Throughout human history, there have always been taxes. The ancient Egyptians used to have a tax on cooking oil. In Greece, taxes were imposed during times of war to pay for special wartime expenditures. But as we study history, we realize that no matter what the tax is, people have a habit of finding ways to avoid them. In England, people would avoid the tax collectors. But the government, so the government's pretty smart. So they got away from taxing how many people were in your household, and instead, you were taxed based on how many fireplaces you had in your home. The problem was here that the tax collectors weren't met with a warm welcome at the door. So then, the government got a better idea. In the late 1600s, they would tax people based on how many windows they had on their homes. Brilliant. Well, to absolutely no one's surprise, people began smashing their windows and laying down bricks just to cover them up. Now let's fast forward to today's society. The government realizes that the poor and middle classes are easy to manipulate. So they sell us this story of Robin Hood that sounds a little something like this. My fellow Americans, we're going to tax the rich so that you can get money from them. Maybe not directly, but they'll pay for health care, for education, other social programs. They'll pay their fair share. Of course, because most Americans tend to vote with their wallet, they agree, and so they vote for the politicians who can give them the most. The problem here is that most of the programs the government creates are complete shit. And guess what? Year after year, the government wants more and more tax dollars. Why? Because more tax dollars will fix an awful healthcare program. And more tax dollars will fix a failing educational program. But here's the thing. If you take a pile of shit and you cover it with dollars, optimism, and then you sprinkle a little glitter on top, guess what? It's still a pile of shit. So anyways, decade after decade, our tax dollars rise. But the rich are smart. Most rich people aren't like those Hollywood actors and actresses that speak with a highly humanitarian tone and then they move as far away from the poor and inner cities as they can once they've already made their money. Life is tough for them though. Sad day. Most of the rich are small business owners that work very hard for their money. They realize that the government is a money spending addicted teenager that's never been told no in its life. So they find legal loopholes that allow them to avoid the tax burden that the government imposes on the people. Sound familiar to England with the windows? So election cycle after election cycle, the poor and middle classes just keep voting for people that promise to tax the rich. But in the end, it's the poor and middle classes that get hurt the most. Whether you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, it doesn't matter. You should be aware of how our government spends their tax dollars. You should be aware that out of every $1 spent on welfare, only 30 cents of that dollar goes to welfare recipients. Where does the rest go? Well, into Washington bureaucrats' pockets, of course. Report that, CNN. You should be aware that we pay members of the U.S. House and Senate $174,000 per year, plus ridiculous benefits. So if you think I'm going to sit here and be fine with the government getting their hands on 50% of my hard-earned money, you have got to be out of your mind. You have got to be crazy. We need to play the game the same exact way. Utilize equities, real estate, and start businesses that allow us to lessen our tax burden. Because trust me, we don't need a pathetic government that is currently wasting tax dollars deciding on rules for using men's and women's bathrooms to take our hard-earned money from us. We are financial freedom. Please subscribe. <laughs>